we begin looking at two modern church architects. Um, first, uh, for the next class, Rudolf Schwartz, and then in the final class, Antonio Gaudi, two quite very different architects. And they raise for us the issue of, well, what exactly makes something modern? Um, is this term simply a way of identifying a time period, whatever is happening now is modern? Or does the term modern identify a specific era of history characterized by a specific way of thinking? Um, a related question is, what do we mean by modern architecture? Now, in the world of architecture, there is a specific style that is sometimes identified as modern or rather maybe a set of styles that are defined by certain principles. Um, some slogans of modern architecture, for example, are form follows function. The idea that the shape of a structure should be determined by the use of the structure. Or the notion of truth to materials. That is, you shouldn't try and make your building materials look like something else. You shouldn't try and make plaster look like marble or try and make wood look like stone. Um, another notion is the idea of a machine aesthetic, uh, the idea that you should use materials that are mass produced and that there is a certain beauty to be found in mass produced materials um, and not necessarily in handcrafted materials. Now, this architectural modernism is clearly an influence on church architects like, for example, Rudolf Schwartz, who's the focus of the reading for class from R Richard Kiekeffer. Kiekeffer also points out, though, that another influence on Schwartz is what is called the liturgical movement, which was the attempt in the 20th century to renew and reinvigorate Christian worship, beginning primarily in the Catholic Church, but also eventually influencing many Protestant denominations. The idea of the liturgical movement was to return to the spirit of early Christian worship, if not exactly to all the forms of early Christian worship. Above all, the liturgical movement placed an emphasis on the liturgy, or the act of worship, as something that was not done by the priest on behalf of the people, but done by the entire people, by the entire congregation or assembly. Among the fruits in uh, contemporary Catholic worship of the liturgical movement is the translation of the liturgy from Latin into the vernacular or the language of the people. Other things are the idea of, of uh, designing churches so that people are closer to the liturgical action, so that there are not barriers between them and the altar, as well as things like encouraging congregational singing so that the people have a vocal role in the liturgy. Now, in addition to uh, talking about the influence of the liturgical movement on Rudolf Schwartz, Kiekeffer also pulls out certain theoretical themes, as he calls them, in Schwartz's architecture. And I just want to mention those real briefly, and you can read about them more in depth in Kiekeffer's chapter. The first theoretical theme is what he calls contemplative space. The idea that for Schwartz, a church is a gathering place for an assembly, but it is also a place in which God is contemplated as the one who stands over and against the assembly. And Kiekeffer links this to the primacy that Schwartz gives to the model of what he calls the broken ring among his seven models for a church. You have an assembly that is, that is gathered, but not in a closed circle. The, the, the circle is broken open so that there can be a God who is, as it were, confronting the assembly. The second theoretical theme is what Kiekeffer calls minimalism of form. And as you look at Schwartz's designs, you can see this minimalism, the idea that you want to strip the building down to its essentials. Perhaps this is an example of the modernist principle of form following function. Um, so you want to reduce the building to its basics. 
A third theoretical theme is what Kiefer calls multivalent symbolism. Um, this is the idea that what symbols are present in the structure, including the building itself as a structure, can have more than one meaning. And this is really part of the nature of symbols in themselves, that a symbol, while it conveys meaning, is also capable of conveying more than one meaning. And Kikefer notes that this is not unlike the way in which a passage of scripture can have multiple meanings, as we saw in Augustine's sermon. The final theoretical theme is the relationship between what um, Schwartz calls the Ringkirche, or the Ring Church, and the Wegkirche, or the Way, or Path, or you might even say Pilgrimage Church. Um, in some ways, the design of the broken ring captures this, that you have a, a ring, a circular gathering, but it's broken open because the people are on the way, they're on pilgrimage. And this reflects the notion that the kingdom of God is something already present that we gather around, but it's also something that we are at the same time on pilgrimage to. The way theologians sometimes put it is that the kingdom of God is with the coming of Jesus, already present, but because we await the final judgment, it is not yet present. So this balance between the already and the not yet gets architectural expression in the, the, the tension between the ring church and the pilgrimage church.